it may look like nothing and it does look like nothing and I, I don't know how it's gonna grow but put a little bit of water what they doing is they're just laying it down and they just throw it on the top soil and it grows Um, we're in front of the greenhouse, um, which is not too far from the ASD, uh, Alternative Special Detention. And um, this is you know, going to be the home base for our project. Food that we do harvest here is taking the food banks around the city to help feed the hungry. And uh, so that, that, get, that gives me a feeling of accomplishment, knowing that, that somebody will benefit from what we do here. I was raised on a farm, northeastern Pennsylvania. And uh, we started a program here in 19, probably about 92, ran for eight years. This is the man that told me everything I got shut I down and we're, he's starting it up again. Restarting. He's real, like, modest. I'm working with these gentlemen. What we're doing is we're growing starts in this greenhouse to, and distributing them all to community gardens all over the city and then the produce is gonna go to local food cupboards. And we're going to grow behind the prison and possibly extend, extend um, the garden back here and use some of that produce for the same cause and also hopefully eat some of it here. Chill over here, guys. Okay, we have to get to work. Not that we're brushing you guys away, but we have to get to work. These are the measurements we made this morning for the beds. There are people in need out there, and there's a lot of food that's thrown away every day. And with what's going on in this world now, we have no room to be throwing nothing away. So that's what we're going to set the beds up. And we moved the lines so we can be able to continue mowing. Tillering, I should say. The next group comes in and have a brand new greenhouse to come into. Beds, lawn, everything. I mean, it's just, it's just prep. And that is the main goal here, to be able to help those uh, who are less fortunate than we are. And that's the beauty of nature. And that's what he, you know, he's been teaching us before the instructors came, the benefit in dirt, air, different plants, trees, even roots. So um, at this point, we're turning it over so we can start it all back up and, you know, see it grow. We have over 500 food cupboards in our organization. We're in our first stages of getting the food cupboards and the gardeners together, but in the end, it's going to be a great program. The Philadelphia prison system is going to grow seedlings for our community gardens. So we're in the process through this program of renovating that greenhouse, starting a garden outside on the grounds. The community gardeners are going to get those seedlings and grow the vegetables. We have 20 community gardens participating. So SHARE, in collaboration with their food cupboards, who are critical partners to them, are really going to help with this distribution. So every one of you is integral to the ultimate success of this project. No one entity can sort of do this by themselves. So we're all linked. My name is Gladys Allen. I'm a church clerk at St. Paul Baptist Church at 10th and Wallace Street, so I should be seeing you people. I'm at the other end of the garden. <laughs> In other words, I would be getting uh, what you produce 
and we would appreciate it. Our motto is, if you eat, you qualify. We're working with Philadelphia Green and the uh, Pennsylvania Horticulture Society to develop a new program called City Harvest. And City Harvest is a program where we are matching up food cupboards with local gardeners. People who have a passion for growing are going to be giving that food to people who have a passion for giving, and it will provide a tremendous amount of healthy, fresh produce to people in our community who have sugar diabetes, have blood pressure, who are overweight, and this will actually help reduce those incidents of uh, health concerns in our low-income communities. They first brought it to our attention about the program. Um, they had a group of us volunteer for the cleaning of the greenhouse. You know, we got all the flower pots out. To see the strings coming up, it's major. So I'm very delighted. I am. The only time we really get to get outside is the yard. And that's just to play basketball, lift weights, and just walk around the yard. I want to get that twice a day, but, it's, but the space is so small, so like, you just be happy. That's why I, I, I didn't think twice about taking this job. Going, I mean, food's going to somebody else. Hopefully we can get some uh, cherry tomatoes out of it. Maybe beneficial flowers here, because it's the first bed. Okay. She's got all sorts of flowers. Just do what she said. That's all I do. I just shake my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Potatoes. Yeah. Potatoes, yep. and then if we need another bed, potatoes, for potatoes, and then salad mix. In theory, we could at least get like 200 pounds of potatoes. We could get more. Yeah, definitely. It just it, this is pretty fertile this, soil, yeah. so hopefully we'll get more than that. When you're planting, if you put one potato in and go like that, you can use that as your measurement for the like to the next potato. So. <laughs> Back. No, um. The bigger the seed piece, the bigger the plant, the more potatoes you'll get. Two and one, just combine. See it? We got two heads. We stuck together. Mm -hmm. This is the first thing I've ever planted in my life. So hopefully I get to see these things grow. But I just thought about when we was talking about potatoes and as much as I ate potatoes and french fries, to think that somebody else did what I'm doing in order for me to eat them french fries. I think that's something. They gave you real potatoes with a potato handset. No, no, don't look at it. Don't look. You might be lying. You're trying to give it an eye contact. You had to get your own potato. They gave you real potatoes. All they gave you was the eyes, the ears, the nose, and the mouth, and the feet. That's all they gave you. You had to get your own potato. Remember that? Somebody will co-sign for me. <laughs> I, I, I ain't co-signing for it. Mr. Potato Head. All the pictures was never included. Yeah, 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 you had to supply your own potato. When, when I seen the commercial, I seen a, um, a plastic potato. I really enjoy it. I really like coming out and being able to plant things and, and digging up things and learning more about vegetables and food products and stuff like that. So I'm very interested. And once I plant my mind to something, uh, I'm very strong with it. And I plan on um, a long-term goal as in being involved with the greenhouse and different projects around the city. I've seen a couple of huge green gardens and you know I'm really interested. It looks like people are taking care of them very well and hopefully somewhere along the future I'll be able to participate in that. You all already met Debbie, right? Yes. So she's actually at one of these gardens and the green things on here are the gardens that are actually giving food and that you're growing the seed starts for. And the red spots are 
the food banks that are getting the food. So I just want you to know where the food is going that you all are helping start seed for. And then the vegetables from outside that don't get eaten here are gonna go to a food cupboard somewhere right around here. What I hope you guys learn from here is that you're not alone, you know what I mean? And you're part of the community, and this is a way to stand up. You know, this type of thing is, a, is something you're becoming. You, know, you have to make look at it that way. Make it make it yours. You own this. I think this was um, somewhat help some of us to understand the law of nature, things dealing with nature. You know what I'm saying about the trees, the plants, the dirt. Not dirt, but soil. You know what I'm saying. And learning things about why is rocks existing, why is this existing, why do animals and plants and insects have to do with the soil? Have you guys ever eaten food that you grew? So you're going to in a couple of weeks. Congratulations. Oh yeah, there she is. Nobody's had any. Uh, no, 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 nobody's had the guts to actually put a ladder up and try and find out how many eggs are in there. I think we'll just leave her alone, though, and call her our mascot. These are the transplants that the guys grow uh, up at the prison. They are so happy. And this is probably mostly like familiar information. Just general harvest guidelines before we talk about more specifics. If you don't harvest them more than once a week, they'll stop producing. And the thing is that the cucumbers, the summer squash, and the okra are the first prison greenhouse stars. Oh, so, oh, yay! Great. So that's why we have that thank you board if you have not signed it. I'm a member here at the garden. I enjoy coming here, planting and growing. And I'm on the committee for the shear garden because I think it's important to share some of the stuff that we grow with others. I have some parsley, sure some basil. Over here I planted, it's been about 10 days, so it's time to remove this. These are string beans, which grows very easy. I had them cover up so the birds wouldn't eat the beans. You see the yellow blooms? You look close enough, I already have a nice green tomato in there. Zucchini, okra, tomatoes. Philadelphia Green's been a great uh, partner and supporter of Liberty Lands, and about 10 gardeners are making space in their own plots to help us save harvest. So I have two tomato plants and two pepper plants that I've dedicated to the effort to, to grow food. So that's how I'm doing it. And they're here every year for me. I come back. It's nice. I'm a really lousy cook, so I rarely actually <laughs> use what I grow. I end up giving it away to friends and family. Um, I just like the process of it, of being outside and getting dirty and watching things go from seed to plant. And I like coming out every day and something is different. Something's changed. Something blooms. Something's... Um, and eventually, maybe someday, I'll learn to cook. Does just signed off on my work with these papers, so I'll, I should probably be out of here in the next two to four weeks. Um, Jose Planco, who was with me when this started, he was released about two weeks ago. The purpose behind this garden is to build a community on the outside, so they don't repeat coming back in here. They're separate from, you know, the community because they're locked up in here. But yet, that's where we parole people to, right back to the same place where they came from. And this helps them to maybe understand, like, they're a part of that. I like it. It's a peace of mind. It gives me a lot to look forward to it. coming out here every day, looking, doing a lot of things. Right um, what kind of tomatoes yeah, are we going for here? Sun gold cherry tomatoes. Sun gold tomatoes. cherry tomatoes. 
maybe you know they had some contacts with some of the covered programs as growing up if they lived in a poor neighborhood or their parents had um, you know some money issues and they were in welfare or something and utilized the covered areas and we had the opportunity here to help with the gardens who help the cupboards so it's just kind of like um, a, a holistic look at life really you know to beginning of you know being able to help things grow in here and and taking that thought and really cultivating it there you go that's nasturtium by the way joseph what is it nasturtium it? it's edible actually is it yeah it's pretty good we all make salads just to taste it to see that it grow right Ooh, that thing was crazy that thing was good you know, they lived in the city and they hang on corners and they don't even have an idea what the earth is about. And that's, um, it's neat to bring people, like they're willing to give it a chance. They have a lot of things against them in here. Most of them have felony offenses and their family maybe is not willing to take them back or they burn a lot of bridges. Most people who come into our institutions usually have only like a sixth grade education. They struggle with preparing a job resume. And it's sad, or they find like, you know, they don't have a job history. This is an opportunity to create one. And to begin to look at the world differently, you have to have somebody, you know, present a situation that maybe they can, they can buy into, you know. So it helps them heal, really. I'm real proud of what, what we've been able to accomplish so far. We got a lot done in a little bit of time we had. Um, hopefully, Hopefully a lot of people get a lot more out of it than I put into it. I like it. How's your guard? This project is important because, as you can see, the children really have fun out here, learning how to be with nature and grow things from seeds, from seedlings, and realize that we can give back to the community with our donations. Sometimes I help my grandpa, because we live in, me and my family live in an apartment, so we don't have a garden. Um, I've been gardening since I was about five years old. I know. In the last couple years, we've donated over 400 pounds of veggies to a neighborhood food bank, and it's something we've been doing um, quite successfully. And so, through City Harvest, we're going to continue doing that. Vegetables are from City Harvest. The City Harvest people, they wash the greens. They give it to you in a nice package. I just turned 77. So when, when you're on a fixed budget, it's hard unless you know really know how to budget every penny. But then there's personal things you have to buy. Your medicine, since Bush gave us Medicare D, thankful. He, he's thankful, I'm not, because before I didn't have to pay for my medicine. Now I got to pay for it. But this food program helps where I don't have to spend money for food and let my medicine go. So this way I'm getting, getting both of them. This is my community. I come for, you know, when I'm in need. Yes, I, I do. I'm on welfare and I keep it simple. 
about? Well, the vegetables are very fresh. The vegetables are good because if it wasn't, you know, we will sure enough complain about it. And every time I come to get it, it's, it's fresh. But what's not fresh, we do leave behind. But we bless and pray for it. I love the fresh produce for my granddaughter. She loves vegetables and fruits. And she's a potato addict. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no candy jumping off. She ain't trying to hit it. Okay. Alrighty, now you have a good day now. I'm a diabetic. And plus I have high blood pressure, but it's all good. See, I'm on Social Security. And that little rent money and electric and water and gas and the food I do buy and my insurance, I'll gobble it right up. <laughs> yes, I I run short at the end of the month, the beginning, the middle, like anyone else. So I get, I get me back for my, me and my three children. The majority of the people that come for food are unemployed. They're either released from prison and they don't have a home. And uh, one day you have one thing and the next day you don't have nothing. It can't happen. So there is a need for food. And we're glad to have produce because that's what they need. Fresh vegetables. Local gardeners deliver fresh produce every week, and it's, uh, it's absolutely delicious. It's all organic, and that's the best. A week ago or more, I, they gave me a wonderful bunch of Swiss char, which I love. It's bitter. And I took it home, and I cleaned it, and I blanched it, cut it up, and put it in the freezer, and now I'll have it all summer. I'm a vegetable eater. Well, we're all, don't forget. I'm a vegetable eater. So us seniors need those vegetables. They're important in our life, hon. We could live very, very comfortable with them. Keep them coming. <laughs> Keep them coming, that's for sure. One of the great things about working at an urban garden is that you have to work with a lot of other people. So you get the chance to really get a sense of community because you don't have your own backyard or your own plot. You're growing and planting with a group of up to 60 different other gardeners uh, to work with and that creates a dynamic that uh, you can't find anywhere else. This is a, a little more of a chance to, to establish a community place over time. Um, three, four, 30 years uh, as a meeting place for people to get to know each other socially and to get to know each other um, through growing and, and, and having gardens. tomatoes steaks mm -hmm. and you're each getting another gray harvest bin and if you need more wax boxes yeah, yeah. Wax boxes. yeah. 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 Um, and then um, transplanting like one of the great things about having the prison helping is that if you have a transplant mm -hmm. you um, you get obviously yeah. a jump on the weeds Lisa tries to carry everything. No, I don't! <laughs> right, so, um, All right. yeah, from, how wonderful questions? you all. The City Harvest Gardens are the Garden of the Philadelphia Green program. And uh, 
I guess we're heavily involved in it, and we have at least four or five plots that we are actively growing things for the program. We we had should have at least a thousand pounds of better food, and our primary food bank is a church on 5900 block of Walnut Street, and we uh, call them and they will pick up. And anytime we have any extra stuff that's not on their pickup day in time, we would just turn and take it up to share, and they'll pick it any day of the week. We would like to set a prime example of what you can do when there's plots available. Anybody that come by and need a plot, they can come by and talk to any garden member. Well, they, I guess over the last 30, 32 years at Aspen Farm, I just happened to be the one that at the helm at the time. We all work together, no one's in charge, but everybody is. This is my home away from home. I like gardening, I like the idea that I'm planting something and I can see the fruits of what I've done. It's my little first plot. My grandmother had a garden, my great-grandmother had one, and so I thought this would be a fine time for me to start one myself. So I'm proud of what's coming up right now. A couple of them are going to Aspen Farms, a couple of in West Philly, a couple of them are going to Garden Run in Roxborough, Brewery Garden, East Falls, Hansberry, I think a couple more in West Philly. A couple of gardens in West, West Philly. Philly. Do you have Aspen Village? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Is that your neighborhood? Sort of. When they first made the Aspen Village apartments uh -huh. across the street, we, my parents were uh -huh. the first ones that moved in there. So when they oh. first moved, made that garden, because I'm... Um, so I would say something maybe like 25 to 30 years ago, they wow. opened up that garden. Wow, yeah. Because I was about five when I moved there. Wow. <laughs> well, if you, when you get out, if you want a lot, you can work in that garden and grow your own stuff. We'll okay, see. all right. We'll talk about it. All right, no problem. <laughs> So we cover it with the white cloth to keep the insects off it. It allows rain and sunshine to get through and keeps insects out. Okay. See, it's right coming across the ground. Look at show coming. Don't be shy. See, right there. Honey, if I can see that, pull right it. Yes. Okay, pull it out. There's a small bee. Let me touch it. <laughs> Look at that. Look how long it grew. Yeah. I mean, you basically, you just somebody decided it was a good idea to eat this root <laughs> before it matured too much into a tough root. Okay. And if you leave it in the ground, it gets tough. Well, why is they coming up out the ground, Mr. Um, yeah. That's from the heavy rains washing away. I like being outside with the fresh flowers and the trees. I like the way they smell. The, this program is um, like on hands training. So they classify it as a job, but it's actually a program. They said we would get a certificate at the end of our six weeks saying that we participated. And actually, we're the first run for the ladies. Um, for this program. So, another notch under my belt, something more knowledgeable. We're learning all about different trees, plants, um, vegetables, fruits. So now, when I go shopping, I'll be more inclined to buy organically grown fruits and vegetables. Organic stuff, he said, was... It's naturally grown. It's naturally grown and you get it right away. Yeah. Whereas in the other stuff with the pesticides, you gotta it wait sits longer, it. like the potatoes, he said. And there's a big difference in the taste too. The spinach that we pulled out the ground today, it tasted real good, real fresh, as opposed to the packaged kind you get in the market, doesn't taste that good. It tastes as good. As good, you're right. Doesn't taste okay, as good. Before you knowledgeable, it tastes fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Before we knew, it all tasted the same. Everybody always yeah, said until it tasted we learned this, until different. Until learned different. So now you're better inclined to when you leave to spread the knowledge with your family. Make the right choices. Right, food choices, yeah. Yeah. We shouldn't have a problem doing anything on our own. It's organic. You don't spray no chemicals on it. That's the stuff you be getting at McDonald's that's all mixed up in that salad. And you could try some of these too. I don't like ranch. You don't like ranch? You don't like ranch? This hot. 
that one now. Bunch of rabbit? You should try it. How does it taste? It tastes good. I think it's very good. Look, she says she don't do radishes. This helps fertilize the soil. Nothing, um, nothing harmful for the plants, right? No chemicals. All natural. Right. You want to make sure the soil surrounding the plant has enough NPK in it. So yeah, when you transplant, whenever we transplant down here, the first thing I'll do is make up watering cans of it. So you just pour it just like this, or you see what it looks like? That would be a two or three ounces per gallon. <laughs> smell like fish. Well, it says ground up fish. What do you think it's going to smell like? Ground up fish and seaweed. So we, Yes, ground of fish and seaweed. Some people have acted out of anger, like I had, right. okay. and that caused them to act in a way that was non-productive, caused them to get in trouble. It's definitely a wake-up call. Not to let your anger get the best of you. And then when you also, when you in jail too, the thing is, like I was telling a young lady yesterday, she was talking about uh, fighting somebody. I'm like, you already in jail. Now you locked up. Why you want to be locked, locked down? down. Right, right. Why you want to go to the hole? I don't want no write-ups. Gardening actually is very relaxing. So when I get out here and I can get me a little garden going on in my backyard, I want to be have relaxation. Something that I can also pass on to my kids. My daughters can come out there with me start gardening. Things that we want in the fall, we want to plant now, which is June. So like the second week of June, Things for like October, September, they'll get planted now. We gotta go. All right. All right. Thank you. See you tomorrow, Miss Linda. All right, take care. I look forward to it. All right. Here's All right. Lady. See Jerusalem now was a response to a need that we found when we moved here and that was um, that there was lots of problems about addiction and addiction was very much at the root of a lot of the problems in the area. Well we're working on our city harvest um, garden and we've uh, developed it to the point we think it's a real important part of our therapy getting people back in touch with nature and um, a feel for growing things and caring for things and just the teamwork of working together and enjoying the outdoors and having a making a beautiful environment for ourselves you know in our life every day we do community service and you'd be surprised how important it is for people I was on heroin and I was on crack and I wanted to, um, to get my life together so I can get my kids back in my life. I wanted them to stay in my life. So I came here, because I've never get, gotten past six months clean, and then I want to get my GED. What you call it, the earth? The garden, like the cabbages, the collard greens, the kale greens, and we eat them. We cook them at the houses that we're in, and we eat them. So it's like, but it's like a garden for the whole neighborhood. You can substitute vegetables for candy, potato chips, pretzels, ice cream. And it does your body better than the junk food, will. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great to be clean. Doing something different besides using drugs or getting high. I'm an immigrant. I came for the American dream. I had a pretty good background. Started really good. College and stuff. Somewhere along the road. I made a mistake. I'm out here being practical about how food is really put on the table. The interesting part is watching those plants growing.
have a little cook out here. I'm trying to line them up so I can chop them, right? He steps in and saves me half the time. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. What are you here for? This is great. Good, busy. Is it? Tastes good? Yes. You try this little piece of this? Yeah. I'm just trying to eat these vegetables. I didn't never looked at them like I can eat them. You know, but now I taste them and it don't hurt to try and it's good. It's just amazing how can you just grow things, you know, and, and just eat them and it'd be good. It's just amazing to me. It's all new to me. You know what I think makes it smell so good? Is the onion. And the cilantro. Gina, how that taste? Very earthy. <laughs> what were you doing? When you think about issues of hunger, homelessness, poverty, nutrition, you know, it's integral to all of the issues that we have to deal here with our inmates you know, because the vast majority of them are drug addicted when they come here. The vast majority of them do not access health care like most people would on the outside. Programs like this that I go to, inmates being involved in a successful program like Harvest, I get to see some progress, I get to see some result, I get to see some good. In this country, if everyone that was hungry stood up, they would line from New York to L.A., back to New York, and back to L.A. again. Today's whole um, coming together was one of those wonderful PHS celebrations. And every time it happens, I'm just moved <laughs> by what people can do when they work together. You are what you eat, and everything <laughs> in this universe is just within you. So that's why we are connected as one. So we need the universe just as much as the universe need us. And I think that is the law of nature. They don't cause an effect or action and reaction. My favorite vegetables are corn and carrots. I like uh, broccoli, um, um, potatoes, and uh, carrots, and all that good stuff. I love lima beans. They are just fabulous to grow, and you don't find them fresh very easily around here. I love tomatoes. Oh, me. Fried tomatoes, stewed tomatoes with some bell peppers, some onions. I love spinach and I love broccoli. Collard greens, china greens, mustard greens, anything green. I love vegetables. Tomatoes, potatoes, broccoli, like I said, uh, asparagus, uh, all types of green vegetables. Yes, I do. Peas, I don't like. First lane, creating salads. Has this oily taste, actually has omega-3 fats, which is very unusual for vegetable. Very tasty. Very cool. Hey, you might as well shoot another one just in case. And that orange stands out. Yeah, it does. It looks good.